What's up, Mets fans? Welcome back. Talking Mets and Rob. How's everybody doing? Before I get started about talking hater and keen to the Mets, don't forget, guys, if you enjoy this video, smash on that like button. If you enjoy all my content, want to see more, want to get those notifications when I post my videos and when I go live, hit on that subscribe button, everybody. Let's get the 500 subscribers. We'll do another giveaway when I get the 500 subscribers. All right, guys. So, Hater and Kane to the Mets. Now, yesterday, the Mets signed Kevin Pillar. And right away, from on social media, anywhere you looked, YouTube, anywhere you looked, people were like, a big trade is coming. Now, a lot of people think a big trade could be coming in regards to third base and Chris Bryant or Suarez or a package like that. Maybe along with a, a starting pitcher. But when we lost out on Justin Wilson as well yesterday, I'm thinking, I'm like, why would the Mets not look into or possibly be an option and look at Hayter and Kane? Now you're going to say, but we just got Pilar. We just got Almora. We still have Nimmo. Who's, where is Kane going to play in center field? Well, Alvin Amora Jr. has a minor league option. So he could be that depth piece in the minors, golf a bit of an injury of Nimmo Almora Jr. And Jose Martinez also has a minor league option. So I was thinking Lorenzo Kane is still a pretty good player and he can still play center field pretty well. He might not be better defensively than Pilar. And I think he's still better defensively than Nimmo in center field. Lorenzo Kane can still be a pretty good option in center field. And when we look at his stats, Lorenzo Kane is still a very good player offensively. And we look at starting with 2017. He was 31 years old, 155 games, 15 home runs. 49 RBIs, and he struck out 100 times. He batted 300. Puts bat on ball. Not a lot of strikeouts. Played in almost every game in 2017. Then we look at 2018, 141 games. 10 home runs, 38 RBIs, batted 308, 94 strikeouts. So he played 14 games less, but he still basically played every freaking day. 2019, 33 years old, 148 games. He had 11 home runs, 48 RBIs, 106 strikeouts. He bat 260. Average went down a lot, but still played every day. Still solid in the center field. Offensively, was okay. And in 2020, he only played five games, but he did opt out. So, you know, we can't really look too much into that, but he batted 333 in the five games. Now, <clears throat> Lorenzo Cain is still, at the age of 34, will be 35, still a very good, solid center fielder. Offensively, is just as good. And I think bringing him in, even though he has money on the contract that we'll look at in a little bit, Lorenzo Cain can still be a huge option that the Mets can bring in and play center field every day. With the options that Almora has and Jose Martinez has, there's still spots on this team that could make this team better. And Lorenzo Cain can make this team better. When we look at Lorenzo Cain's projected stats for 2021, at the age of 35, it would look like this. Six home runs, 23 RBIs, bad and average, 265. You're like, okay, strikeouts, 53. Now, <clears throat> it's not great, but when you throw in Pilar in and Almora in as center field options to replace Nimmo in later innings, why not get a guy who can potentially be very good offensively, better than Pilar, better than Almora Jr., no doubt, but defensively can still play center field. He's done it at the age of 33 and 34. And he didn't play last year. He opted out. 
So not only is his body rested at the age of 35, he can still hit and he can still play defense in center field. And then you have the option of Nimmo playing left field, which Nimmo should be playing left field. And that's just me. But at the end of the day, I think Lorenzo Cain can be a trade option for the New York Mets. And when you when you're like, all right, but what is his contract for the next couple of years? Well, here it goes. In 2021, he's making $17 million. Pretty high, but at the end of the day, the Mets were willing to go over a certain amount over the luxury tax anyway when it came to Bauer and possibly other players. And if they are going to make a bigger trade, if it's not this one, if it's if it is the third base route, they're probably going to go over the luxury tax also with that. So he makes $17 million at the age of 35 in 2021. And his last year of his contract, 2022 at 36, is $18 million. Now you're going to say that's a lot of money for an older player. I agree. But Lorenzo Cain can still play. He could still pick it and field at center field. And offensively, we're not looking for a powerhouse. Clearly, the Mets are not looking for a powerhouse. But the main trade, the main piece in this trade is going to be none other than Josh Hader. And losing out on... Justin Wilson losing out on other bullpen guys that I don't the Mets could have got. Josh Hader is the biggest piece to this puzzle. Now, this can be a similar trade that the Mets did a few years ago regarding Edwin Diaz or Robinson Cano. The only difference is Lorenzo Cain can still play. And his contract is a lot less than Robinson Cano. And Josh Hader has been one of the best closers in baseball, just like Edwin Diaz was when the Mets acquired him. Now, I'm not saying the Mets are going to give up a Kalenic type of guy. We don't have that in our system. But you probably will have to give up a Mauricio or something like that. But when it comes to Josh Hader and how dominant this pitcher is, and he's a lefty, which the Mets clearly need, Josh Hader is the main player in this package when it comes to Lorenzo Cain and Hader. Hader is the guy the Mets need. And packaging Lorenzo Cain and taking on that salary might cost a little less prospect-wise. And when you look at Josh Hader and his stats, looks like this. In 2017, his first year in the league at 23 years old, he had a 2-0 ERA in 35 games. He gave up four home runs, 22 walks. He had 68 strikeouts. Pretty good. He didn't pitch in a lot of games, but he was pretty good. Solid. At 24, all-star. He was 6-1. and one. He, played, he, he was in 55 games. He had a 2.43 ERA. Gave up nine home runs, 30 walks, 143 strikeouts. Nice, solid all-star season. Very good. 2019 at 25, 262 ERA in 61 games, 15 home runs, 20 walks, 138 strikeouts. Another All Star season, solid. One of the best pitches in baseball when it came to the bullpen in the last couple of years. And in 2020, at the age of 26, 379 ERA, 13 saves, 19 innings, 31 strikeouts. Gave up three home runs. And with the saves, in the last couple of years, it was like this. He had 12 saves, 37 saves, 13 saves. He had 37 saves in 2019. Now, Josh Hader is one of the best bullpen arms in baseball. And you're going to say, why are we going to trade big-time prospects for a reliever again? Well, I think Josh Hader is better than Edwin Diaz when the Mets got Edwin Diaz. When Edwin Diaz was the best closer in baseball, Josh Hader is that. But Josh Hader, I think, is better. I think he has more control over his pitches. I don't think Edwin Diaz knows where the ball's going half the time. I think Josh Hader does. And bringing in a closer-type guy gives us that, that spot that Lugo was in 
and Hayda can pitch in that spot and probably could possibly be the closer, depending on what Edwin Diaz does. But the Mets have an option. The Mets don't really have an option after Edwin Diaz as a closer. I mean, you could say Trevor May, but Trevor May is not really a closer. You're not going to you're not going to throw Familia in there. You're not going to throw Batantis in there. There's not a lot of options for the Mets after Edwin Diaz. You need that backup plan. And Hayter can be that Lugo type in the bullpen. And he can close when Diaz cannot. And when eventually when Lugo comes back in sometime in May, now you have the Hayter, Lugo, Edwin Diaz connection where any one of those three can close if one is not picking up the slack. The next person can step up. And Hayter is one of the best bullpen arms in baseball. The Mets in a trade scenario could be something like this with Hayter. And Lorenzo Kane. The Mets could do that if they don't focus on a third baseman in a trade. But when we look at Hayter and his projected stats in 2021, at the age of 27, he's still very young. 3.57, 15 saves, 9 home runs, 22 walks, 83 strikeouts. Now, I don't like that ERA. I don't think... I don't. The way baseball reference looks at their uh, players' projected stats, they focus in a lot on 2020, and I don't like that. Now, I don't I don't understand why his ERA can go up that high. In my opinion, I think he can I think he can have at least a three ERA, maybe three two ERA. That's where I think he can he will project as. Three fifty seven seems a little high to me, but. They could be looking, they could be taking into account how many innings he's thrown as a young arm in the last couple of years. But I think he can pitch better than a 357 ERA. That's just my opinion. And I think the Mets could still use a big time lefty arm in a bullpen like that, who can possibly close and step into that Lugo role until Lugo comes back. And if Diaz struggles, the Mets have the option of bringing Hayter in as the closer. And that's why I think this trade is a good idea for the Mets. And you're like, you're like, okay, you know, I like Hayter. Nobody, there's not a lot of Mets fans that wouldn't like Hayter on this team. But what does his contract look like? Well, it looks like this. This year in 2021, he's making 6.675 in 2021. He's arbitration three and four eligible in 2022 and 2024. He still got three years of control, which is huge. But you got to give a couple of prospects to get Hayter and Kane. Even though Hayter is the bigger part of this puzzle when it comes to that type of package with Lorenzo Kane, but you would have to give up something to get Hayter and Lorenzo Kane. Now, like I said before, if Lorenzo Kane, if you're going to take his contract of the $16, $17 million over the next two years, the prospect list, the prospect going back to Milwaukee is going to be a little less than if you didn't take on that money. Now, remember, when we got Kalenic, when we got Cano and Diaz, the Mets didn't take, they took Cano's contract and they still gave up the, the Mets' top prospect. It was just stupid. We know that now. And Kalenic would, is the number one prospect in baseball. So it's it's frustrating, but at the end of the day, I think Hader can be worth it. And at the end of the day, Kalenic in center field, where he was projected to play, the Mets needed this kid. When it comes to Mauricio or the other plays that I'm going to put into this package for Hader and Kane, there's not really a spot if the Mets are not going to trade for a third baseman for a couple of these players and on this team. So... When it comes to a trade for Josh Hader and Lorenzo Kane, I think a trade can look like this. The Mets get, obviously, Josh Hader and Lorenzo Kane. The Mets would have to give up Mauricio, JT Jin, and a player that I think that could be good for this Mets team in the future but it still can give up, which is Thomas Zapucky. Now, Zapucky, I feel like 
could be pushed into this bullpen this year. But it doesn't seem like the Mets, the Mets are probably looking at Rosenthal or something of that nature also to bring in that right-handed arm also in the bullpen because I think we need two more bullpen guys. And that's why I think Hayden is a possible good idea and package Kane where you can just solidify that center field spot for the next year or two. And it gives us time for, you know, Pete Crow Armstrong to pop up in the minors and probably be ready in 2023, possibly, possibly 2022. That's what I would do. But the trade scenario that I propose is Josh Hader and Lorenzo Cain to the Mets for Ronnie Mauricio, JT Jin, and Thomas Zapucky. I think that's a solid trade. It's not giving up too much. You could say, yes, you're giving up your number one prospect. I get that. But you're keeping Matt, Matthew Allen. You're keeping Brett Beatty. You're, you're keeping Alvarez. You're keeping your, your big guys in the top of that prospect list. And that's what I think. Ronnie Mauricio really doesn't have a place to play. And he is projected to become a third baseman because he's filling out into his body. But Ronnie Mauricio, if the Mets sign Lindor and extend him, there's no one to play at shortstop for the next seven to 10 years. If the Mets ain't going to make the move for third base, J.D. Davis is our third baseman for the next couple of years. And then you have McNeil at second. So there's really nowhere to put Mauricio. So Mauricio, in my opinion, is an expendable. J.T. Jin, I like as a power right-handed arm that could be a potential big league starter someday. But I think he's expendable because you keep Matthew Allen. And Thomas Zapucky could could possibly be a, a part of this bullpen this year, but I think you could throw him in the trade to entice the Brewers to give Hayter and King. And Zapucky can be that bullpen arm for the Brewers, could be – the third base or the shortstop, Ronnie Mauricio, for the Brewers. And you give a possible really good starter in JT Jin in the coming years to the Brewers also. So that is my take on the Josh Hader came to the Mets possibility. I want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget, guys, if you enjoyed this video, smash on that like button. If you're enjoying my content or my video, want to get notified when I post my video and when I go live, smash on that subscribe button, everybody. And look out for the free giveaway Mets jersey that I posted yesterday. The video is going to pop up just now. Click on that so you can find out how to enter to win that free giveaway. I want to thank you guys for watching. And as always, let's go Mets.